Welcome to Hero Power. This is episode 122, and I am your host, Avantes. And as always, I am joined by my co-host, Zoroshio. I am not dead. <laughs> this week. <laughs> and <laughs> Versika. <laughs> How do you follow that up? I, is that a record head shake? I, I'm not dead yet. I mean, technically, you got me in the pre-show. I, I don't know how you get faster than zero, but yeah, I don't know zero's not that fast. <laughs> we're working on that, though, right? Well, Taco Tuesdays get me going pretty quick, but uh, yeah, we're working on that. We're working on that. Oh, and uh, we are lucky and honored to have very special guest with us. Mr. Nate Wolf from Into the Wild. Thank you, guys. I appreciate uh, being here. I'm really excited. Um, so I'm a fan, and, and uh, I've never done one of these video things before, so this is very cool. <laughs> awesome. Well, we're happy to have you. I know all three of us are big fans of the show, even though Zorosho and I don't play uh, as much wild as Avanti's, but I, I think uh, it's something that we're, we're both mildly interested in. Uh, especially since your show has started up. And, uh, yeah, I, I'll, I'll be honest. I'll credit some of my interest in dipping into Wild to your show. Uh, so you guys are doing a fantastic job over there. We're we're uh, honored to have you on the show. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, Wild is, is a lot of fun. Um, and, I, I mean, honestly, I hope that we can generate some more interest in it. Um, I think that's one of our big problems. It's just not enough people playing it. So Well, I, I credit all of my interest into jumping into wild to in into the wild into your show well all of it into that and wanting to be better in wild than avanti's but that's that's <laughs> not hard that's i let me finish that <laughs> sentence for you that's not hard <laughs> so no uh wild i've i've always been one of those players who even back when i played magic the gathering you know when they introduced what they used to call top one and top two which was, you know, top one was everything that had ever been printed minus a banned and restricted list. I, that was my favorite format. In fact, uh, there was times I would drive on Saturdays, drive 100, 120 miles to uh, Chattanooga south of us and, just to play in a top one tournament on Saturdays. And, you know, I just, I, I like the ability to use all of my collection, not just section certain parts now i understand the need for formats like standard it helps players to jump in late and get caught up easy without having to sink a lot of money into the collection but for those of us that have been playing since the beginning i love being able to go back and play with some of the older cards that you just don't see every day I totally agree with you, and I, I see the point for standard, and I think that it's important, um, just like magic, uh, I mean, to keep it fresh, so to speak, and, and also um, it's easy to forget how many people there are playing this game, but that um, a large part of the player base is free to play, or at least mostly free to play, and how difficult it could be. I mean, I was fortunate enough to come in really early, um, but even then, um, like, I came in after... GVG was like had been out for a while and it was shortly before Grand Tournament was announced and even then trying to get all of those cards was like I felt like I was playing at a big disadvantage um, my, my little brother got me into playing and um, he started with the beta I started playing around when um, Next Ramus right between Next Ramus and Black Rock Mountain right kind of back then but um I remember playing him, and at, at the time, as a free-to-play player, um, 
I was so frustrated because I'd play him and he's got all these crazy <laughs> cards that I didn't have. And I was like, I'm not playing you anymore because, you know, you drop your Dr. <laughs> Boom and your and all your legendary cards that I don't have and it's not fair and it's not fun. Um, but, you know, eventually you play more and more and you get the cards and, and I'm personally more of a collector. Um, I used to play Magic a long time ago back in like junior high, high school, but it is um, very expensive to kind of keep up with everything um and i think people complain about hearthstone being expensive hearthstone is not expensive if you talk to a magic player <laughs> so, oh yeah no yeah yeah um, well, i know uh the, the three of us have played magic previously and I, I know for myself one of the big reasons that i got out of magic was when they went to where they were releasing the three expansions a year it just became cost prohibitive to to keep playing it, it's it's hard uh, I think I sold my collection like three or four different times. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think one of the advantages that we have with the whole crafting system is that you don't have to worry about, um, you know, if there's a card you really want, like, you know, maybe it's hard to get, but you can save up and you can craft it so nothing is unobtainable. Where, you know, I mean, I remember in this, like when Innistrad came out, I bought a box um, and I opened up all the cards and I sold all the expensive ones and I barely broke even and I was just was I, I don't know maybe it kind of left a bad taste in my mouth but um i just felt like if you it, hearthstone is easier to be competitive and maybe you sink some money into it i know i mean a lot of the players that play a ton of arena you can you know you farm a bunch of packs and a bunch of gold that way i don't play almost any um arena but i feel like it n nothing is necessarily off limits you know and some of the people that maybe play um specific classes more than others you know you but it's it's easier to kind of craft the cards that you want um anyways but as a collector yeah i i f was i finally able to kind of get all these cards and then they announced i remember when they announced um wild and a bunch of my friends had were like oh cool we can dust all of our cards and get a bunch of dust so that we can craft all the new set for free and i was like don't do that yeah but <laughs> but i mean coming from like I used to collect a bunch of comics and and um, some cards and other stuff, and always kept everything in really good condition. And I thought like, there's no way I'm disenchanting this collection that took forever to collect. And and then you know like any of the adventure cards, like you're never ever ever going to open it in a pack. So you're um, you know if you dust that card, you know there's no way you're ever getting it back. And I, I mean some of the adventure cards say are arguably bad. Mm. So major major domo or my exna or one of those that is probably never going to see play but then again you know every once in a while and i think that's the one of the things that i like a lot about wild is that um a card that is bad now might be like tier one card a year from now so that's right because you know it's what you know we we talk a lot about you don't know what's coming and it's like you know, one of the things we're going to talk about here in just a few minutes is the Hall of Fame rotations and why do they make mm -hmm. the decisions for the cards that they do. And, you know, it could be a current interaction in the current meta that causes them to move it. It could be something that's in development that we haven't seen yet that they just think would be too powerful that would cause a card to move. Right. So, I mean, you know, like you say, the, the cards that that are considered bad now could be really good in a year or two. And... I'm one of those people that I secretly cringe and cry on the inside when people tell me they're disenchanting all their wild stuff that's, you know, because, you know, I'm just playing standard. All that matters is standard. They only do standard. I'm just like, no. <laughs> what I, I feel really bad. I mean, I, I, I get it for the people who want to be super competitive, but like realistically, how many of us out there are, you know, in the top 1% of people who are competing for HTC points and like... I mean, I play competitively on ladder, but like, I'm not going to the world championships or anything. So, I don't know. I, I mean, I I get the argument, but then again, it's like we're about that time for like rotation again in next month. And if people, you know, dust three sets, it's like uh, yeah. I feel bad. But yeah, where I really cringe is is where like if you want to dust stuff from GVG or the Grand Tournament or whatever, like that's one thing maybe but when you start dusting adventure cards just because you can never open that in a pack again and um 
you know, if you ever want it, you got to craft it. Yeah. There's, I, just no, there's just no other way around it. I and saw so, it. I saw a prominent member of the Hearthstone community the other day on Twitter was crafting, spending 1600 dust to craft Emperor Thorison. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, it hurts. But, it does. Uh, yeah, but no. No, so, uh, yeah, we <clears throat> got some great stuff to talk about. Uh, we're going to read a couple of emails real quick. And before we get into the news, we're going to talk about uh, Blizzard's big announcement this week, and then uh, we're going to talk about this week's Tavern Brawl. Normally, we usually just kind of gloss over the Tavern Brawl, but because it is the Wild Brawliseum and it's, this is Wild Fest, we're going to go into a little more detail about that, and uh, Nate's been kind enough to bring some decks that we're going to talk about uh, that you guys might could try, and then uh, during our play portion, we're going to play some Wild, so... Let's jump into it. Uh, first email says, Hi, Hero Power Team. Greetings from the UK. First of all, I want to say I really enjoyed listening to your la latest episode, and it sounds like you guys have a great show. It was my first time listening, and for no other reason than I'm still trying to work my way around the vast qua uh, quantity of great shows out there. I know you guys don't know me, but I wanted to share my thoughts on the email you received and my thoughts on the community. Firstly, you all handled it so well and with such grace and professionalism. I was shocked to hear anyone would go out of their way to write such a thing. I'm relatively new to the Hearthstone community, and so far I have found it welcoming and inclusive, but I know that is not always the case. What I will say is this, that person is, of course, entitled to their opinion, but the memory of their words and their email will fade into nothing and will be forgotten. But you guys, and especially Versika, will continue to be respected and liked and valued in this community. I am sure, and you definitely have one new fan of the show, and that's for sure. I have made it my aim to be as positive as I can in the community, and so I thought I would share my support. You may have had one bad email, but I'm sure you have now had many more good ones. That is a balance change that matters. So I offer you my two mana for this turn and click Lesser Hill for two. Kind regards, Grazzler18. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've been surprised at how, how um, I guess we're still getting feedback on that, so... Yeah, in fact, uh, we've yes. got one, one more email uh, that touches on that, and I'll uh, read it next. It says, Hello, Hero Power crew. <laughs> I wanted to remind Devontes he owes me a copy of the Priest deck Versika played in his last UHL match. That uh, has been sent. I took care of it today. I apologize for the delay. You should have it in your email. Check it. Uh, she says, I missed the episode with the email to Versika, but I caught up this week. I would just like to say one thing about it. When it comes to playing Hearthstone, there are only a few podcasters who are not professionals that I seek out for tips and tricks. <clears throat> Otherwise, I do look to the pros. Those are Ridiculous Hat and Wicked Good for Meta and Versika for the Unexpected. I also know that I'm not alone in this, and I hope that the exposure this email received on other shows translates into Versica guest spots so the, this punk can't turn on a podcast in the next few months without wondering if there's going to be a Versica guest spot or not. No offense meant to Zeroshio or Avantes, of course. You guys are fabulous. Peace and love, Star Babe. P.S. Thanks for the tech against Token Paladin and Versica. It was just enough to swing the match in my favor in a couple of tight games. So, for, first of all, I have no idea what your gamer tag is because I didn't give anybody any tips. <laughs> uh, now, I get spectated quite a bit. So, if it's something that you saw on the spectate, I know I've been taking in Blood Knight uh, for Dude Paladin. And uh, it's, it's in all the decks that aren't Priest because I needed a way to get through the Divine Shield. So, if that's what you're talking about, I got lucky. So, thanks. You're welcome for me getting lucky, I guess. Uh, I, I want to give a personal thank you for saying I'm fabulous and lying to Avantis. 
But uh, as for the uh, as for your list, I, I think you you might. Uh, th- th- there's a lot of other really good podcasters out there that you should be looking uh, you should be looking to for for meta tips. And uh, as far as me guesting on other shows, um, that's kind of Zeroshio's thing. Um, I'm uh, I, I feel a very unique niche in Hearthstone, and it, it doesn't really translate. I guess, uh, into as many other shows. So, uh, while I thank you for the sentiment, I, I don't, I don't see that happening. So, uh, but thank you for writing in and thank you for, for definitely, uh, checking out the UHL match. Uh, it was fun to watch your comments. Uh, so thanks for showing up and supporting, uh, wow. Ben and I in our final match, which I hate that he didn't make the playoffs, but it was still, uh, it was still fun to do. All right, and then our, our last match, or our last match, our last email pertains uh, exclusively to Wild, and it says, hey guys, with the current Wild event, I wanted to make a deck suggestion. So uh, the following is uh, Boyd, who's a member of our patron community. It's his uh, Big Priest, Wild Big Priest deck. One Silence, two Resurrect, two Shadow Visions, two Shadow Word Pain, Two Spirit Lash, one Shadow Word Death, one Barnes, two Eternal Servitude, one Greater Healing Potion, two Shadow Word Horror, two Excavated Evil, one Light Bomb, two Shadow Essence, two Lesser Diamond Spellstone, two Psychic Scream, one Ragnaros the Fire Lord, one the Lich King, two Obsidian Statues, and one Yassarge Rage Unbound. So uh, this deck will also be in our show notes if you want to check out the uh, the deck code. But uh, I'm going to turn it over to Nate real quick, uh, our resident wild expert. What do you think of this list? How does it compare to lists you've seen and or played? Um, it's, it's very similar to... It, it's... It's very it's typical of a like big priest or resurrect priest whatever you want to call it. Um, and actually before before I get too far along, I just want to say um, Versika, we love you. And I that that whole email thing. I mean, I don't want to dwell on it, but it was it was crappy. But I'm happy to see how close together it brought everybody. I mean, I think that it was a negative thing that had a really positive outcome. So I mean, I, we can let it go, but. Um, I don't know, just to see that kind of outpouring of, of good nature from the community made me feel happy. So yeah, it, was, it was really cool. Um, but anyways, I, I, to get back into this big priest list, um, I, I don't want to say it's like the standard um, big priest list, but it's very similar. And and I've also heard it called Resurrect Priest, and, and ideally what you want to do, um, the first maybe five, six turns of the game, a lot of times you can't do much. Um, so there's tons of spells in it, so you're wanting to control the board, um, eliminate like the smaller threats. I mean, this deck kind of feeds on Paladin, although it, if you draw bad, you can get, you know, aggroed to death. Um, you've got, if you can pull Barnes on turn four, you pretty much win. Um, because Barnes will pull out a 1-1 one, one of, of one of the giant creatures in, in your deck, and then as soon as it dies, you've got uh, a bunch of different ways to resurrect it. Um, and then, I mean, it's similar to the standard version. Of course, I'm, I'm not... Well, let me pull up the deck list here on my other screen. But um, it... Uh, okay, so different ways to resurrect your minions. And ideally, like in the perfect world, you play, you know, coin barns on three or play barns on four. You can play like a 1-1 Ragnaros or a 1-1 Lich King or, or whatever. Let it get killed and then bring it back with Resurrect for two mana, which is wild exclusive. But um, it's only a rare. So like if people want to craft it, it's not expensive. Um, you've also got... Um, Eternal Servitude for four, which is standard to also bring back something. And... There is kind of an RNG factor with Resurrect that it brings back um, a 
random minion that died of yours. So, you know, if your Barnes dies and not your other one, or or if both your minions dies, you know, you have a chance to bring back Barnes. So you kind of have to um, keep a little mental tally of, of where your minions are at. Unless you're me and you get Barnes 100% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, very true. What always seems to happen to me is I'll Shadow Essence for, or is that what it's called? Which is the six mana one? Yeah, Shadow Essence. It'll pull a 5-5 five, five copy out of your deck, and I swear it's always a 5-5 five, five Barnes. And it's just... <laughs> um, but it's got, you, you know, this is a, it's a really strong deck. My my only, um, I, I, I kind of have like a love-hate relationship with this deck because uh, I've gotten stomped by it enough times that I f- feel salty, but I think it's, it's really strong when it's piloted correctly, and... Um, it, it's not that easy. Um, a, sometimes, like depending on the draw, you know, you'll end up with a handful of giant minions that you just can't play. And typically in this deck, I mean, a lot of times you can't do anything until turn six, mm-hmm. uh, turn five. You know, so you're kind of relying on uh, your removal. But it does good against like the zoo decks or the token decks, paladin or some of these where uh, you've got a, a lot of different board clears. I think Priest has got a lot of board clears in general, but when we talk wild, like Priest has a ton of board clears. Um, we're starting to see more um, of these like Naga Giants decks, and Light Bomb is a thing in wild, and it's like I mean it's like a full board clear. Um, Psychic Scream is really good on well pretty much anything, but it just eats the tokens alive. You know I, that it makes me happy when you've got a, a, a full board full of buff tokens and you just send a whole bunch of uh, silver hand recruits into somebody's deck and now they're top decking little one ones uh, <laughs> so it's good i mean it's a really fun deck i think it's it's strong i um sometimes i play it sometimes i don't it maybe it depends on the meta that i'm seeing but if i'm running into a lot of aggro um it, it's pretty strong and if you can with this deck like if you can survive until turn six or seven like once it gets late game, like your opponent's in trouble. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think uh, what's it called? Obsidian Statue is like one of my sleeper favorite cards. It's just so strong. Um, it's got that four attack, so other priests can't touch it. It's got the life link or whatever it's called, life yep. gain. I always think the magic terms. Um, right. Life steal. Yeah. Life steal. Life steal. Yeah. Plus uh, the death rattle to kill another. Yeah. I mean, like it's just so good. So, There's a lot of value packed into that card. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen some versions that are running Ysera, which I think is a good um, upper end minion. This one, this version doesn't, right? Correct. Um, but I've se- that's the only other minion that I've seen in this deck. Um, and it's good sometimes as the game gets drawn out because Ysera can generate minions when you need them. Um, or you can get... Sometimes you can get that uh, five damage to everything, use it for lethal, sit on it for a little while. Yeah, so. th- there was a version of this deck in last week's uh, Tavern Brawl, in the pre-constructed Tavern Brawl for pre uh, for the Priest class, and Versika can attest, um, we were having coffee on Sunday morning, and I was just sitting there clearing daily quests with it because I, I was like eight or nine wins into Tavern Brawl <laughs> already with this deck, just knocking people so, off left and right so what's the plural for ragnaros because there was a lot of them <laughs> <laughs> yeah right yeah. isn't that ragnari Ragnarosis? <laughs> yeah. so uh, nah, i know it's not ragnarosis because that sounds like a disease <laughs> <laughs> i think the the only thing better than an 8h shooting eight like eight giant fireballs you know or whatever uh is multiple yeah yeah. Ragnarai shooting it's, eight damage fireballs. Yeah, so it, it's a fun deck. Uh, we'll post the, the deck code in our show notes if you guys want to check it out. Uh, that's going to bring us to the news. And uh, it was... Yesterday was quite the day. Um, out, yeah, it's, it's like our show notes were empty. Yeah. And then it's like... Boom, now we have a full show. Our, our show notes over. were empty, and our, <laughs> our patron Discord was going crazy for about you know two or three hours. We probably had 300 messages back and forth. It was, 
it was quite the announcement. Um, yeah, Blizzard, it's exciting. Blizzard, yes, very. Uh, Blizzard dropped a dev video where Mr. Brode himself announced the year of the Raven. And um, basically, as we say goodbye to Year of the Mammoth and uh, look to the future, uh, our three Hall of Fame inductees for this year are going to be Ice Block, which I can safely say was pretty expected, um, yeah, yeah. Cold Lot Oracle, and Molten Giant. So those... Now, the Molten Giant is not only going to Hall of Fame, it's being reverted back to its pre-nerf state of 20 mana. Yes, which, which is exciting. Which a lot of people are... A lot of people are saying that's going to make the Naga uh, Sea Witch decks more powerful. However, they're not really because uh, at 20 or 25 mana, it makes it 5. It doesn't change anything. It's just going what back it into is, my handlock deck. What it is going to bring back is yeah, more yeah. Reno decks because now Reno... Uh, can or, or even not just in handlock, but also the control mage that I played, where you put out multiple molten giants uh, and then Reno all the way to full health. So it, it's going to allow those decks to kind of yeah. come back again, uh, which I think is healthy for the meta to have some of these older dominant control decks go into uh, the current wild meta. And that's I'm excited for it. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I the people are talking about the Naga Giants. I don't think it'll really make a difference at all, because whether it costs twenty five or twenty, like if you're playing it with Naga, it's going to cost zero either way. So it yeah. doesn't make a change. But I think um, my my first thought was, oh, Handlock, Handlock will come back. Um, but yeah, I mean, it could any of your like your control mage or really. Um, I mean, I think what their rationale was that we want to see some kind of new archetypes and, and I don't know, this may be fun. We'll see. I, so, I, so I got a question for you, Nate. Yeah. Specifically on this, do you think these might take the place of Mountain Giants in a cube lock style control deck uh, where you use your health as a resource throughout the Molten Giants cube, dark pack, you're not healing back up, and you're getting just a slew of molten giants on the board. Yeah, I mean it makes sense. I'm um, people are uh, so I've seen that deck run where people either run two two um, mountain giants, which makes sense because you're life tapping your your hand has always got you know eight cards in it or whatever, um, so it makes them cheap. But I think mountain giant would be just as good uh, because you're like you said, your health total, um, like the more you tap, you, you drop your health total, you play a couple giants for pretty cheap and then heal back up. That works. Uh, I think it works really well, actually. Uh, it's just cost prohibitive right now. So yeah, so, uh, while, go ahead for a second. it seems like a good tech choice to me. Well, uh, while I was doing show prep today, I was listening to value town and they were talking about these cards going in and the general consensus was that ice block was sort of the card expected to go in. Mm -hmm. And that the other two were just kind of cards that, like, sending one card over feels bad. And it's just like, okay, well, we need to send two more over, and so what two do we feel like may impact? Shadow Step! <coughs> well, see, to, 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 okay, so I'll, I'll get to that in a second. But, so, Molten John, I think, is the easiest to explain. The nerf killed it in pretty much all the formats except for Warlock, and there's just too many good cards in Standard right now that it's just not going to see play. So reverting it back to pre-nerf and sending it to Wild, it may mean that Blizzard realized, okay, it can't exist in Standard in pre-nerf, but it's not getting played at all in Standard in post-nerf. So we pre-nerf it, we send it to Hall of Fame where it can be better handled, and maybe this card can come back into and see some play to, to me that that makes a little bit of sense, especially in future sight when you're looking down the wild and you're looking for variety in wild. Yeah. Um, so it, it tells me that they're thinking a little bit from, uh, from a wild standpoint, the, uh, the cold light Oracle, you know, they brought up the point that it's not in all decks. So it seemed like a little out of place, but you know, card draw is powerful. Um, right. 
and neutral card draw, allowing any class to draw, is sort of something that they've tried to steer away from. Certain classes draw really well. Certain other classes, it's a little bit tougher to draw. So Cold Light Oracle gives that class a chance to draw, and I think Blizzard kind of prohibits that on purpose. So it seems like now that Cold Light Oracle is being seen as, okay, you know, it's okay that my opponent gets to draw two cards with me as long as I get to draw the two cards. It's not as interactive as they want it to be. It's not as punishing as they want it to be. And so I think it was limiting card design coming up on this, not because they're already working on the third set in this cycle. So right. you're talking about limiting cards that are coming out next year. And uh, so I, I think that's sort of like the hex nerf in the sense that you're kind of pushing that forward because it's limiting the the thought process on the upcoming cycle after Year of the uh, Raven. So Ice Block, real quick, Ice Block tells me that they're done with secret destruction. Like, it's just not going to be prevalent. So if it's not in all mage decks, why send it to... Uh, why send it to Hall of Fame? Well, I think it prohibits the formation of other mage archetypes. It's like, as long as you've got freeze control mage over here that depends exclusively on ice block, why try and find another way? Why try and innovate? So if you remove ice block from the equation, well, now that kills, it effectively kills freeze mage as we know it. Some people are saying that the Artificer will be able to allow you to build up armor. And between Artificer and Jaina, you're not going to need Ice Block as much. And I'm, I'm going to disagree on that. But I think what it's going to allow you to do is it's going to allow Mage to evolve past just Secret Mage and Freeze Mage. And I think it was also limiting design and a lot, keeping them from going in different directions with Mage in these next expansions. And so you... you you've got to send it out or you're basically because the card is already good enough you're just limiting mage to two to three art types yeah, I, yeah and i agree with you there uh i do want to make a point though real quick before before i pass it over to you nate um ben bro did make a make a statement on cold light oracle that a lot of the reason was specifically design space not so much the card draw but uh, Cold Light Oracle limits how much they can put out uh, to modify things with battle cries, uh, like maybe uh, doubling battle cries or having battle cries activate again because Cold Light Oracle's battle cry is so effective uh, in, in certain archetypes. So it, Cold Light Oracle definitely was a design space, but you're definitely spot on with the ice block and molten giant. I, I, I definitely agree with your, with your, uh, your opinion on those. Yeah. Well, and I think if we look in the past, the de like the, um, the cards or the archetypes that they nerf are the ones that they say don't feel, um, fun and interactive. Right. And so when we see, um, like you're playing someone with freeze mage or exodia mage, it, it it's more one-sided like i mean i've seen a lot of freeze mage players compare it to playing solitaire because you're you know you don't even care about your opponent you're just trying to not die and draw your combo pieces um and i think it's very similar with um, like a mill rogue or something like that where cold light or oracle is used where it is really you're not interacting so much with your opponent as much as um you know trying not to die and and you know, utilizing your combo or whatever, or or abusing that battle cry, and I mean, mill decks are fun, and they're I think the skill cap to pilot them correctly is really high, um, but then again, like it feels really not fun to lose to, and I think that was their um, statement, like way back when they nerfed um, Warsong Commander, um, and it had nothing to do really with Warsong Commander; it was all about um, Grim Patron, but you know, it's the same kind of idea. That these kind of OTK decks are are not very fun and it's limiting. So I get it. I mean, it, it felt kind of like a weird choice to Hall of Fame to me, but at the same time, um, it's fine. I don't know. It just means free dust for me, so yeah. I'll take it. Uh, another big change coming with the Year of the Raven is they are introducing quicker quests. So what does that mean? 
means all 40 gold quests will now be 50 gold minimum. And some quest requirements have been reduced. So in the past, you may have had, you know, play 30, uh, play 30, or play, what is it? Yeah, play 50 warrior cards. Now it's going to be like play 30 warrior cards. Or, you know, win two games with one class. Now it'll be win one game with a class. So they're, they're making it faster to go through those daily quest grind, and you get more gold as a reward so be easier for i feel like it'll be easier for free-to-play players to start saving up for the next expansion so that's that's a i felt like a much needed and good change coming um they're also introducing this thing nobody asked for called <laughs> in-game tournaments I don't know where this came from. Out of left field. Nobody saw this coming. Tur tournament <laughs> mode? I Tur never thought of that. That is a brilliant <laughs> right? idea. Nobody you know, nobody I, has asked for this since the day the game Up to now, so. I never even thought of wanting have a, to have a <laughs> tournament mode in the game. I'm good on Team 5 to think ahead of what the players want. <laughs> yeah. So, so basically, the way this will work is anybody can create a tournament. And then you can invite your friends or, you know, uh, <clears throat> people to participate in said tournament. And Blizzard will do all of the matchmaking and all of the deck checking uh, for you. So that's something you don't even have to uh, worry about as you're going through. Now, Bro did confirm that there will be no bans at launch. So that means most tournaments will be either uh, best two out of three, where you bring two decks and win with two decks, or best three out of five, where you bring three decks and have to win with all three decks. So there'll be no bans to start, but that might be a feature they add at a later date. Uh, yeah, I think they he, said that they were going to be like work in progress, right? <clears throat> yeah, he specifically stated that uh, this is going to be treated like a beta feature, and they're going to kind of roll it out, possibly in a limited format, and then eventually push it out to the community. But it's constantly going to be a work in progress, and we're probably not even going to see the beginning of this. He said until mid two thousand eighteen. Right. So we're looking probably summer, uh, probably to coincide with uh with the launch of the second set because that's when yeah. big patches get put in yeah. so it will probably be something that comes with the second set which is usually uh beginning august beginning to mid of august so uh right. that's when i would expect to see that now you might see some some of these features pushed to possibly fireside groups or things like that uh on a limited basis. If only they had a out. if only they had a group of tournament organizers they could <laughs> use as beta testers. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Th that's something maybe maybe they'll maybe they'll have like some kind of summit or meeting to talk about that. Uh, we don't know. That's uh, who, who knows you know, what these... Blizzard does, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Welcome to my life, Nate. Welcome to my life. <laughs> All right. The other big announcement was we are finally getting an alternate hero for the druid class. Yes. And yes. lo and behold, it's Lunara. Now, so, I know I know Versika is probably excited about this cuz I know he's a big Lunara fan in Heroes. I am. I'm a huge yeah. Lunara fan, but I feel like they really missed the mark here. Uh with both Torin and Undead currently unrepresented in Hearthstone at all. This okay. was this was okay, so there's there's two real classes that Torin shined in, in World of Warcraft, and that's Shaman, which they decided to go Murloc. We already know how I feel about that. Uh, and then Druid. So now you've you the two main classes that Torin are really known for, I feel like on in, in, in WoW, and neither one of them are the alternate hero portal. It, it just doesn't really seem... It, it, I understand why they went with Lunara, because she's not Horde or Alliance, and coming into a, a, a WoW expansion where 
you're pitting the two against each other, you're kind of PC there. And I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. They, they didn't take that into account at all. Uh, <laughs> I, I was just trying to get that in there. No, I, I feel like they missed the boat here. I feel like um, you, you could have gone with, um, you could have gone with a, a Tauren. Uh, Hamul would have been fantastic in this spot. Um, but, I mean, Lenore is fine. It, at least it's not a Murloc. So, show. <laughs> I don't disagree with you that they could have they had other options and and I hope they explore them. However, um in the year of the Raven video, which we'll have the link in our show notes, is a teaser for the sets for next for this year. So they have little images that kind of tease what the three sets might might not be, you know. And the first one has a strong hint of Duskwood and or the Emerald Dream. See, I was thinking Hydral. I I I could see where and, and Hydral's been one that's been thrown out there, but I really I originally thought Emerald Dream, and then I was reminded that you could access the Emerald Dream from Duskwood and the roots, the darkness, the coloration of the roots made me really think of D Duskwood. Not to mention Duskwood has a plethora uh of Creature types. You have minions. You have a lot of satyrs up there. You, uh, not minions. You have demons. A lot of satyrs up there. You have a lot of uh, beasts. You have elementals. The 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 tentacle things that warlocks like. There's a large variety of of creatures and creature types that could be used for a set. And then of course you have the Emerald Dream, which would be great as a uh, as a solo adventure uh, for for you to go to go to the solo adventure and, and venture into the Emerald Dream. Not to mention, Lunara is the daughter of a demigod, which is Sonarius. And there is a strong connection to Sonarius, the Emerald Dream, as well as Lunara. So I, I think she fits well because of the theme of the first set that's coming out. Uh, and that's if my predictions are correct, which usually they're not. But uh, if that's the case, the Lunar is a good fit. Now, I do agree with you that I would like to see more Torrens other than the Sunwalker, which I think is the only Torrin that I've ever seen in the game. Karen. Uh, Karen, okay. Uh, and then, and, and, and definitely Undead, which we see a lot of cards with Undead influence, but I would like to see uh, more heroes with both Undead and, uh, and Torrin. Influence, of course. If you think about that, there's also the goblins haven't represented in hero in, in, in a hero uh, worgen. There's still quite a few that haven't hit yet, and I hope they hit them. But I think Lunara is a good fit, uh, and I hope we hear more about this soon. Well, how about Friday? Friday. So, so um, <laughs> we will get an official Twitch stream this Friday, March second. At 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, so, you know, for all of you there in between those time zones, uh, this will be on the uh, Twitch.play Hearthstone channel, and it will be probably Broad and one other person uh, talking uh, about the Year of the Raven. Yongwu? Okay. Yep. yep. Okay. Now, so, it specifically says it's they're talking about Year of the Raven. Right. No, they there may not, not be any set in from set announcements. Exactly. But Ben Brode in his video, again, link in our show notes, uh, did say that uh, you we would be they would be giving us information on the new set in March. Well, all right. So, Friday is March. So, so, so real quick, all of us saw the tiles. Everyone saw sort of the preview tiles. So real quick. I'll give you my three, and then I want predictions from all of you. <laughs> all right, so I'm thinking Hydral, one. Aachen down, two. And Vashir, three. Interesting. Yeah, that's very interesting. Um, hmm. All Not right. the, the directions I would go. Now, I'm thinking... Um, uh, again, I said this yesterday right after they made the announcement. I feel like Expansion 1 just looks very Emerald Dreamish to me. And I'm going to stick with that. Yeah. Um, expansion 2, I think, 
and, and I think we've said this in the past, and I'm going to go with it again, but I think it could be very Dark Moon Fair. Oh, that'd be fun. <clears throat> and then um, Expansion 3. Gosh. You know, um, it... Now, now, now that Versica has said it, I don't, I don't see anything else for expansion three. That's that's all I see is water. Dune? No, oh. Vashir. It's like oh, all right. I see is water now. When I look at it, I don't. I hadn't picked anything for expansion three yet. Um, if I had to go something else, I would say it kind of reminds me of Booty Bay. Okay, so my predictions are obviously Duskwoods. I originally thought Emble Dream, but as I heard other predictions, Duskwood sounds sounds solid to me. The second one, if you look very, very, very close, there are little itty bitty rings around around the the inner circle, which I saw are those, yeah. identical to the ethereal portals. So I think we're going to be in Nether Storm. The okay. third one, pirates versus ninjas, and no, just kidding, <laughs> kidding. <laughs> so, uh, those those of you that have listened to us a long time, you'll understand why I made that joke. No, the third one, I I, I kind of like your line of booty bay, but I went a little different direction, a little further up in the Stranglethorn, uh, the trolls. Zul That's what I thought too. Z ZG is in Stranglethorn, is that correct? It's the Zandalari. Yeah, is it Zulgarub? Zul or yeah, Zulgarub. Yeah, That's Zulgarub it, yeah. and, and Zulfrock and all those. But because of the, the green markings that kind of look like teeth and whatnot, I think that it is more Troll -based. strangle thorny. Okay. Which would give them another 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 chance to not screw up Nessing Wary again. <laughs> <laughs> all right nate your turn all right i you keep in mind that i ha have almost zero wow background so i i mean i played enough to get the liadrin skin and that's that's about the extent of it so i i've but i've heard some predictions and um I, from kind of my super limited um view here i'm still kind of rooting for the um you know, it, it, when I saw it and it looks like the Emerald Dream or like Moonglade Portals type type thing to me. And so that's that's kind of what I'm going with for the first one. Um, the second one, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. It looks cool, though. Um, and I'm not quite sure. The third one, when I looked at it, it reminded me of that card back that we got with like the spears on it. And I just thought trolls. So I'm I'm holding out for that, but but we'll see. Unfortunately, my WoW background is very, very uh, negligible. So, um, and, and that's okay because you know they no longer call it Hearthstone Heroes of Warcraft. It's now just Hearthstone because, as we've seen, they've been creating some of their own lore to go into sure. the game. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. these could be nothing ba being based off of nothing in. World of Warcraft. It could be something created exclusively for the game. We'll just have to wait and see. I mean, and, the and cool thing is that. Oh, sorry. I was just gonna say the cool thing is they've got so like such a rich history to pull from, that um, it's made me want to learn more about the WoW universe. You know, read the books mm -hmm. or or the comics or whatever, and play the game. Um, so, I mean, if I had more time, I probably would. So, I, I feel like they do have such a rich lore. I almost hope they pull from it. The one thing also just from that is Lunaro was kind of a background fixture in the story and wasn't really a kind of front cast character until they brought her over uh, into Heroes of the Storm and made her more known. Uh, and then they've added some more stuff about her into World of Warcraft since then. So it's kind of ni nice to see uh, we've seen Hearthstone characters brand new go into World of Warcraft. We see some go over to Heroes, Heroes of Storm now and then mm -hmm become more pro predominant in, in Hearthstone. So it's really neat that the storylines and the lore of the games are fluid 
in a way they intermingle, but at the same time, the rise and falls are differently, uh, yeah. are different depending on the game. So, uh, I'm excited for 2018. Uh, I think 2017 was one of the best years they've had. I personally think three sets is the best decision they've made for the format. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to see three more and then finish up the year for the first time with six full sets uh, and not a limited set of adventure, uh, you know, event, a solo adventure, uh, you know, like Karazhan or, or uh, the one with Reno. That one, yeah. I can never remember. League, League of Explorers. Yeah. League of Explorers. But they've done really good with their free-to-play content. They're, I mean, between like the Lich King and um, like the dungeon runs were super fun. So I feel like I was sad when they said they weren't going to be doing adventures, but I feel like they've made up for it. I mean, you still can get a card back or something, you know, there's some sort of reward for completion. I'm seriously um, worried, though, that they're never going to be able to top dungeon runs. Um and it doesn't seem like they're going to do anything identical to Dungeon Runs. Maybe something similar. Mm -hmm. um, but if they go back to the regular format of solo adventures, I don't know if people will enjoy it as much. They'll just say Dungeon Runs were better. Uh, yeah. But I think if they latch on to a solid story like the Emerald Dream, it could revive those kind of story-based, uh, you know, you know, for not just story, but, you know, levels. Mm. Uh of uh, yeah. of solo adventures, and I think a great way to do that would be something like Emerald Dream, uh, as well as if it is Nether Storm for the second set, they could do like Architraz, uh or one of the Nether Storm uh, raids over there. That so I, I'm excited to see what they can do if they pull from rich lore. Uh, the solo adventures are just going to be wonderful. And yeah. the set, the sets themselves, they've proven they're going to make a solid 135 card sets. All right, make sure you uh, tune in on Friday to find out more. That brings us to this week's tavern brawl, and as we talked about a little last week, we are in the uh, wild, the middle of Wild Fest, and this week's tavern brawl is the Brawlicium. So welcome, Gladiator. Build a deck for the wild format using cards from every Hearthstone expansion. To the winner goes the spoils. More wins means more rewards. Just like Arena, 12 wins for maximum glory, 3 losses to end your run. Now, I think um, I saw a tweet earlier today from a uh, good friend of the show, Wicked Good, that I believe uh, Versika retweeted, and he said, "I just played two matches in Wild Brawlicium. I'm two and zero over a standard Silence Priest and a standard Murloc Paladin. Don't make the same mistake they did. Build an effective Wild deck. And well, since we have Nate here, we're, he was like." Let me uh, just give you guys some examples. So why don't you tell us about some of the decks you recommend for Wild Brawliseum? Um, Yeah, for sure. And I want to kind of give a lot of credit to um, Steve Lubitz, Wicked Good. Um, for He wrote a really good article um, that he's got posted on his Twitter as far as which, you know, what wild cards are good to craft. But also... Um, a giant shout out to Blister Guy who created this beautiful infographic um, that's got like the top tier. You want me to go ahead and throw uh, that up? Sure, yeah. Um, kind of like the top tier meta decks in Wild right now. Um, <clears throat> and then he's got it set up in a way where the standard cards are blocked out so you can see which ones are Wild specific. So if you're looking to make a Wild, um, you know, competitive Wild deck, which cards do you have to craft if you're missing? Not very many is the answer. Um, and so uh, these are all really strong. I, I was going to do something similar, and Ray beat me to it. And I think um, you know a couple other people were interested in doing something similar. But this is such a neat tool that he's got there. Um, I know you guys have got a link to it in uh, in your show notes as well. Mm -hmm. um, that, that should go up to the Twitter. And and this is like a nice high res image. So if it's a little bit hard to see on the screen now, it'll be um, good later. So of all these decks here, I mean, I think they're all very viable. Um, 
I'm sitting at rank four right now um, on the wild ladder. I've I, I went up to rank one and kind of bounced back and forth, and then I started screwing around and dropped back down. Um, but uh, the decks that I've seen do really well on the ladder um, are basically most of these. Like the most common that I've seen is this Naga Warlock deck that. Um, kind of exploits the Naga Sea Witch interaction, making your giants costs more or less zero. Um, but it, it can be uh, quite expensive dust-wise uh, because all the giants are epics, and um, it runs uh, Malganus and some of the big demons that are all um, kind of epic cards. And it can also be a little bit swingy, uh, kind of difficult to pilot, I think, for a more standard-based player that's looking for... Um, a successful deck to run. Um, Secret Mage is is really good. Um, it's very similar to the standard version, although we've got Mad Scientist to cheat out some secrets for free. Um, and because there's a lot of draw in this deck, Forgotten Torch is really good because not only do you get the burn damage, but you get an extra uh, fireball, basically six damage for th only three mana. Um, and it fills your deck a little bit so that you don't uh, mill yourself on accident. I think the Secret Mage is really strong. Um, I don't follow the wild or the standard meta all all that much, um, but from what I hear, Q block is is very very strong, and I think that our wild version of Q block is even better uh, because you've got Void Caller, which is a really effective way to cheat out a Void Lord or a Malganus um, for super cheap, and it's a threat. I mean, you drop it on the board, and nobody wants to damage it because you're looking at. Um, you know, oh no, I better not kill this because th he's going to drop a Void Lord for free. Um, it's funny, you'll see most of these decks now are running to uh, Spellbreakers because there's so many um, overpowered, crazy minions in Wild. Void uh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like a huge brick wall with three tiny brick walls behind it. Yeah. Um, that if you can get it out... Um, yeah, Craig and I from Into the Wild we had this discussion because he he just hit legend using um, Get Me Out's Murloc Paladin and I hit rank one with it. It's a really strong deck, um, and for a part of the time we were kind of feeding on these um, warlock decks because they're so slow. I mean, you spend it's it reminds me of Big Priest in the first half of the game. You're just tapping, 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 trying to get your your cards, but then you have them drop this giant taunt minion and how do you get around it? And, you know, if I'm lucky enough to, to draw my silence card, I can silence it and push, you know, to try to get lethal. But uh, if you don't have it, man, it's kind of tough. So, um, but I, I think for, you know, the people that don't want to spend a lot of dust, you're free to play players or, or whatever. Um, you know, Secret Mage is really strong. Murloc Paladin is really strong. Um, Combo kind of, uh, Priest is really strong. Kind of piggybacking off that, Secret Mage only takes an extra 200 dust if you don't have the cards. Mm -hmm. uh, and I uh, I was missing a second copy of a card, so I, I crafted it. But uh, I went seven wins and have very limited experience on Wild. And, nice. And this deck may actually end up being in my Wild rotation because it's really good and furthermore... It can go over the top of uh, the cube warlock that's in wild, yeah, yeah, and beat it and beat it definitively. And same, I mean, it's same with the. It, it works well against the big priest as well because when you drop these giant minions with taunt that you just can't get around, the burn damage goes right over the top. Mm, and, that's I, I'm actually running a uh, burn mage in wild right now. Um, I've used it to kind of go from twenty to like 14 or wherever i am right now but it's pretty much you know it's very similar to the secret mage but i'm only running uh explosive runes and ice block and flame wakers and everything goes face last mm -hmm. night last night i killed a guy on turn five just going face with everything all my spells you know i i, I of course i had the nuts draw Frostbolt, double ice lance in my opening hand, so it was just nice. burst damage city, and I, I'm really enjoying the mage in wild right now. Cool. Have you? Yeah. Have you guys tried the Brawlicium yet? You said you have, right? Seven wins. That's pretty. Yeah, good. Yeah, I had seven seven wins on my free one. I haven't tried it again, 
because uh, we had to do something like a podcast or something. So. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I, I'll be uh, I'll be playing it probably tomorrow. Tomorrow usually Wednesdays are pretty hectic leading up to the show, so Thursday is my day to really dive into Tavern Brawl. Yeah, so. I played. I mean, yeah, Wednesdays. So we usually record our show on Tuesday nights, and and um, so Wednesday Craig is busy doing all the audio editing, and I'm busy doing Photoshop stuff, and uh, plus the the Tavern Brawl drops, and I I mean I played one game so far. Uh, I'm using Secret Paladin, and I won. I mean, oh, but it was I love some kind of Secret Pally. It's fun. It's fun. It's I mean, it when it curves out, it curves out so nicely that it's so difficult to deal with. And fun, fun fact: the very first episode of this show. We played Secret Pally on the show. Yes, Very we nice. did. So, I died a little inside. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when. I mean, there's always going to be, you know, that evil card in uh, in Hearthstone that everybody loves to hate on, and and it was Mysterious Challenger for a long while there. Uh, yeah. Now he's relegated to Wild and doesn't see much play anymore, but. Working working well for me. I mean, I only played one game, and I won it at least. Yeah. So I'm one and zero. But but we'll see. Yeah, I'm actually I, I've not been in wild much at all. So I am going to probably ask for help in getting my Brawliseum done this week. Um, but yeah, so Secret Paladin is like so far the biggest reason why I've not delved into wild. Well, Secret Paladin you know, the... hasn't been viable in Wild, or hasn't been around in Wild for quite a while. Yeah, yeah I agree. The first first time I saw it, I'd probably just tilt. <laughs> <laughs> Note to self: build Secret Paladin after the show. All right. Well, uh... <laughs> since, since, since I got Legend on Saturday, you know, little pl self plug there. I have dipped into uh, Wild a bit, and I have been playing the. Uh, it's it's a secret. It's a secret paladin anything deck. So it's a mixture of the anything combo as well as the secret pa secret patch package with Mysterious Challenger. And Is that it Jonas has deck? I believe it was actually uh put in our I think it was Matt at Arms gave me the link. I'm not oh, sure okay. where he got it from. But uh it's been great and it shot me up the the, I think I was at like rank twenty, and now I think I'm in twelve. Nice. Uh, so it's it's. I'm just wanting to pad my wild. So when I drop my four, my four ranks, hopefully, we'll see how that goes tomorrow. Uh, that uh, I won't be solo, and can start working on wild in pieces every month, while I still push for legend and standard. Yeah. All right. So go, uh, your first Wild Brawliseum is free. Go check it out. No reason you shouldn't. Uh, all the deck codes Nate suggested will be in our show notes, as well as a link to Blister Guy's infographic. So plenty of decks for you to choose from, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, it, you, you know, that's the great thing about Wild is you can go out and play whatever you feel comfortable with. I was just Absolutely. sitting here thinking, oh, yeah, you know, you've got, um, oh, mad scientists might throw together a fun hunter deck, you know, now that you've got some of these new hunter secrets, might go in there and build something and play around with it. That's that's the beauty of wild. It, your, your imagination is your only limiting factor, so... Go check it out, have some fun, and uh, let us know what, what you think and how you do. You know, Feel free to shoot us an email and let us know how you did in Wild Brawl Sim and what you played. Love to hear from you. So, all right, that brings us to this week's deck analysis and breakdown. Um, again, we are going to be playing in the Wild format this week. And uh, Nate supplied this week's deck as well. It is the Mally Druid. So, uh, as you can see, I built the deck pre-show just to see, and I'm missing a couple of cards. But I will run down the deck list, and then I will turn it over to Nate to kind of talk about how the deck plays and what you're looking for kind of on your mulligans and things like that. So, the deck has two Moonfires, two Living Roots, two Wild Growth, two Wrath, 
two branching paths, two ironwood golem, two oaken summons, two poison seeds, two swipe, one faceless manipulator, one ixlid fungal lord, two nourish, two spreading plague, one malfurion the pestilent, one aviana, one malagos, one coon the forgotten king, and two ultimate infestations. So tell us a little bit about how to play this deck, then we'll go uh, play a couple games with it. Awesome, sounds good. Okay, so this is essentially an OTK deck. Um, so early game, um, you're wanting to ramp. So you've got Wild Growth, um, which I've had some pros lately tell me is their favorite two drop or one of the better two drops in the game. It's very versatile. I mean, if the mana ramp alone is really nice, but if you pull it late game, you can draw a card, which is nice. Um, and you're looking, it's kind of early game removal and a lot of cycle. Um, so branching paths is also really versatile where you can armor up if you need to. Um, if you've got a board full of um, one fives from Spreading Plague, you can buff them um, or you can use it for the card draw. So it's really versatile. Same with Wrath. Um, you can use it to draw a card, but you can also use it to kill a minion if you need to. But the game plan essentially of this deck is to, you want to draw out your combo. And the OTK combo, um, which it feels a little bit crazy, but it, it actually works pretty well, is um, so you play Aviana for nine, makes all your other minions cost one. And you play Kuhn for one and use his battle cry of refresh your mana. So now you've got 10 mana again. Um, <clears throat> and then you play an Ixlid, and then you play Maligos, and now you've got two Maligos, and then you play Faceless, which gives you two more Maligos, and then any spells that you have in hand, you can kill your opponent. Um, this deck used to run Alexstrasza to get your uh, opponent down to 15 first, but because there's um, so much armor stacking uh, with Druid now, that having the multiple Maligoses works better because you can beat through all the armor. Um, uh, Oaken Summons, I think, is good because not only are you getting the armor, you're also um, getting a free Ironwood Golem, essentially, plus uh, thinning your deck. And then I think um, Poison Seeds is a relatively new tech, uh, specifically for Wild, because we're seeing a lot of these Naga decks where you've got a board full of Giants, and it's one of the only counters that I'm aware of is you drop Poison Seeds, and now they're all 2-2s two instead of 8-8s. Eight um, but it also works, you know, when you've got a board full of buffed Murlocs or, um, you know, uh, Divine Shield or, or really anything. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Um, there's, uh, I've had games where I've had, you know, a bunch of health plus, you know, 30 armor on top of it. Uh, it's 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 really fun. It's a versatile deck, and I think um, the hardest thing about it for me is that there's just a lot of decision making. You know, when do you hold on to your spells? When do you not? When do you draw versus when do you buff? Um, but uh, it's really fun to play. So awesome! Well, I'm excited to check it out. Um, let's do uh, real quick. Anybody with any last thoughts? Uh, no from Versica. Zorosho, anything you want to add? Well, uh, obviously when this goes live, it's going to be a new month. Uh, so in March, your new ladder uh, rank will be four less than it was in February. Uh, remember that if as long as you progress up at least four ranks, uh, you're progressing. So get back to it. If you've had trouble in the past, uh you know, maybe this is your time to start working towards legend and just be strong. Uh, we talked about it pre-show with Nate. Results-oriented play doesn't get you anywhere. If you're worried about the win every time, then you're going to find yourself spinning your wheels. So focus yeah. on solid play, and you'll go up the ladder. And maybe Mar March will be your month. Cool. All right, uh, Nate. Why don't you tell all of our listeners uh, where they can find you? on the on the web and uh where they can find your show awesome i really appreciate it um so yeah we have this little podcast called into the wild which is a wild specific podcast um we've uh been fortunate enough to have guests on every week and we kind of aim to do so in the future both um other content creators but also some wild pro players 
um, kind of for selfish reasons to to just learn a lot from people, but um, hopefully everyone else can utilize that as well. Um, so uh, you can find us on Twitter um, at at Into the Wild. Um, you can download the podcast at RadioCircus.net. Uh, we're also on iTunes or any of the other um, podcast catchers. Uh, as far as me personally, you can find me um, at Nate Wolf HS, uh, just like it's up on the screen right now. Um, but for those of you listening to the podcast, it's N A T E W O L F E H S. Um, I do some infographics from time to time. Uh, my initial aim was to do them about once a week, and I'm doing more of like closer to two a month now. But um, try to get those out when I can. And also, we run a little wild Facebook group called Where the Wild Things Are, and you can find that at facebookcom groups wild things hs. So awesome. thank you so much, guys, for having me. I appreciate it. No, thank you for coming on the show. We were very excited uh, when you agreed to be on the show because we'd been wanting to talk wild, and we thought, who better to talk wild with? Oh, so. thank you so much. It's a, it's a blast. So I'm, I'm having a, a great time. I really appreciate it. Cool. All right, guys. Um, so that's going to do it. If you're joining us on Twitch or YouTube, please stay tuned for the live play portion of our show. If you are listening via our audio podcast, we would like to thank you for joining us. Remember, you can follow us on Twitter at HeroPower underscore cast. You can find all of our past episodes on YouTube at youtube.com slash ECMMOGamers or on our website at HeroPowerHS.com. If you enjoy the show, you'd like to support and improve it or join our patron-only Discord, you can do so at patreon.com slash hero power and we will see you all again next week and don't forget to use your hero power <laughs> all right so sir whenever you are ready and you have found a worthy opponent we will begin this adventure into the wild actually I didn't have you on my friends list. I did send you the invite. Oh, no. Okay, okay. Let me just reboot my client real quick. Okay. And do I have, like, two seconds to run to the restroom? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be fast. But, yeah, I need my, my client, like, uh, logged itself out. So give me just one second, and I will add add you back on. We're long-winded. That happens sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Us? Long-winded? Yeah, I've, I'm kind of getting the wild itch uh, of meta so arms cream for that <laughs> <laughs> really so, oh. says the guy who in chat says he has a Christmas tree in his pocket <laughs> yeah so I'll, I've decided I really like Kaleri in our chat she heckles you to Vontis. Yeah, I love watching it yeah that's uh, that's my, my better half yeah, she's my, she's my chat troll. Yeah. <laughs> my little chat troll. But yeah, uh, I'm really enjoying both the Seeker Paladin slash Murloc, as well as this new Burn Mage. This Burn Mage is just straight up. It's fire. No pun intended. It's yeah. It's, you want to go up Wild Ladder with very minimal, pretty much only four cards. From the why from that are not standard legal, uh, and it's it's fact, just while awesome. we're waiting, I'll go ahead and show you guys my burn mage that I'm running. Uh, basically, it's very close, it's you know, uh, two arcane missiles, two ice lance, two mana worm, blood mage Thalnos, two frostbolt, two bad scientist, two primordial glyph because nothing says fun like an eight mana pyroblast. Uh, two Sorcerer's Apprentice, two Arcane Intellect, two Explosive Runes, two Flame Wakers, two Forgotten Torch, two Man Frost Novas, one Ice Block, two Fireballs, Alaneth, and one Firelands Portal. So it is straight burn to the face as fast as possible and fin finish off your opponent. And if you're Avantes, you do get Pyroblast off of Primordial Glyph every time not every time but I, i've had quite a few finishes with an eight mana pyroblast of course you have <laughs> you know i hate you sometimes <laughs> just sometimes me, i'll have see to me no more i'm i'm sure that's where avanti's got the list <laughs> oh and um the deck you were talking about earlier um 
Zoroshio from Mad at Arms. Yes. Mad at Arms said in chat he got it from Nate. <laughs> I was waiting for Nate. I was waiting for Nate to get back to drop that bomb. But yes, he sure I did. Think, I think I got it from Jonah. I got it from Jonah Ra. Uh, it's not mine. My, not my original list, but I can't take credit for. It, but it's super fun to play and it's very viable. So if you ask, if you ask Raynad, you can always take credit for it. There you go. It's <laughs> it's my personal list. That's right. You played it. It's your list. Okay. All right. Wait. I, so yeah, apparently I need to add Versika. I thought that I had done that, but I guess not. The other two, yeah, you, you guys, uh, I already have the other two. So yep. let me let me just add you. Now that I know who you actually are, <laughs> I'm, I'm the intro guy. Believe it or not, I'm the introvert of the group. It's that's really. F <laughs> I I am too, um, but this like. Can do the social part and then I will go collapse afterwards for a little while. <laughs> um, for I don't know, are you comfortable giving out your battle tag on the air? Yeah. Or can you oh, send yeah. It? Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll give it out all the time. It's uh, Versica 1364. Okay, cool. I just sent it. All right, so. As soon as that. you have an opponent, go ahead just, and kick this pig. Oh, okay, cool. Do you guys want to play against me, or you want me to just play on the ladder? Oh. I don't, I'm, you, I'm, you, if you don't mind to play on the ladder, with, yeah. Go ahead and play oh, on the ladder. Sure. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'll jump on. Or yeah, if you want to do casual and not jeopardize your rank four, that's fine too. I'm all, <laughs> I'm almost back to three. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool. I'll play it on ranked. Why not? All right. Okay. I'm 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 searching for a partner right now. Okay. I am looking forward. I I I really I remember when Aviana Coon was popular in standard. So I'm looking forward to uh, seeing this deck played. Yeah. I it's never really got to... fun. I mean, Wild is kind of super polarizing, so you know, I mean, you kind of never know, but... Yeah, I never got to really enjoy it, because uh, I didn't even craft Coon until Lich King, or, uh, yeah, uh, KFT came out. Yeah, so, right. all right, so we've got That's a priest. Point, uh... Our opening hand is Living Roots, Coon, Ironwood, and Malfurion. What are we looking for in our mulligan here? Uh, so really what I'm looking for is the mana ramp. I mean, like, ideally, I've got two wild growths and, uh, I don't know, something else. I'm tempted to keep, like, okay, if it was a, you know, a really aggressive deck that I'm going up, then my mulligan strategy definitely changes. Uh, but against Priest, like, it's probably going to be Big Priest, like you guys are, we were talking about earlier this week. Yeah. Uh, and this may be a, a bad idea, but I'm going to keep Kuhn just because he's part of my combo. Okay. I like it. I, I like it a lot, actually. You draw we into Nourish, Nourish Ixlid, and Moonfire. And top deck Spreading Plague. So, just pass here. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing I can... I'm not going to waste my coin quite yet. So, But my game plan is to draw my combo pieces... I've already got two of them, so really, what I I, I need Aviana, Maligos, and uh, well, I could probably do it with just that. But Faceless uh, Manipulator would help. A uh, Faceless would help, you know. And then I, but like hypothetically, I've got sitting on you know two to four Maligoses. This little zero cost Moonfire will do twenty damage or whatever. I mean, my math is not my my good subject, but uh, <laughs> it's all right. Not Zeroshios either. Hey, I'm great at math. My <laughs> shoes off. <laughs> as long as, yeah, as long as I've got fingers and toes to count on. Um, but uh, so I, I will say, you have to be careful to not clog your hand up too much. Honestly, this hand is pretty clunky for me, and I may coin out um, nourish at some point just to. Mad at Arms in chat said, uh, "Craig is amazing. His songs are the best." Oh my god! So if you guys are—I don't know how familiar are you are with the show, but Craig has—it's like a watching a Marvel movie. Like you have to stay past the credits, and uh, 
And he's got a song that he'll sing at the end of each show, and they're different every single time. Oh, see, look nice. at this. Barnes on four. <laughs> yeah. Into uh, Obsidian Gollum. Or Obsidian of Statues. Course. Yeah. Of course. And so, which is, is actually okay for me, I feel like, because um, it, it, it's different. Um, when I'm playing, like, Big Priest is more of the, like, kill you slow type of deck. Yeah. So, branching. Uh, I, paths I mean, granted. For double armor. Yeah, and that's what I'll do for now. I mean, really, I, my my goal here is to kind of survive in order to get my combo piece. Um, I, I'd honestly, I'd rather not kill his Obsidian statue because that kind of invalidates his if he's running like his Resurrect cards. Um, the now big he can't cards use them in his hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't care if he wants to do one damage to me or four damage to me. That's fine. Um, honestly, like if I'm going to kill anything, I'll kill Barnes. Um, and then he can, uh, you know, resurrect his barns. But it's a little risky. Spirit Lash to kill Oh, he's it. killing his he's... own golem off. Yep. Interesting. That's it's... actually a pretty heads-up play. It is. Um, so, yeah, I can't knock it. Okay, so I've got nine cards. And that's the only my only real complaint with this deck is that your hand can get kind of clunky sometimes. And um, uh, what I'll probably end up doing here, like I need to thin out my my deck a little bit um, so that I can draw more. Like the, having these damage cards in my hand, that's great, but now this is kind of useless. I mean, I could ramp for it, mm -hmm. but I don't have any other draw right now. And so I think what I'm going to do, I've got nine. Uh, so I'm just, you know, I'm in a spreading plague here, and not that I really need it, but this is a not a, not an aggressive deck that I'm going against, and um, that's probably the best you're going to get out of plague is is two minions, right? Yeah, I mean, at some point, I, like I've seen this deck with a whole board full of minions, um, but it, it's slow against uh, at least what I'm playing, and and. They're relying a lot on the different resurrect um, abilities, and so if his cards aren't dying, then they're kind of sitting dead in his hand. So that's he's kind of slow playing at this point, right? I mean, and that's the yeah. He's just gonna is... start pumping out go. Uh... Obsidian. So you're drawing three here. Yeah, I've got ten, so I've got to get rid of something. Um, but like, that's okay. Like the living roots, yeah. I mean, I'm not in any risk of getting killed, and he can... I mean, the beauty of this deck is that I can kill him from 30 health, and so I, I really, truly don't mind if uh, he's got a... Like, these are not the scary minions. Um, like, if he pulls out... Like, Yasiraj is a scary minion. Like, these guys, uh, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. And and Siege would deal with these minions rather well, it, actually. It, it would. Yeah, it would deal with them very nicely um, this deck runs a lot of times I've seen it run t two copies of um, what's it called the uh, power word horror that kills anything with okay. two or less attack which is really I mean that's the only reason I'm not picking the and it also sometimes will run um, the potion was it potion of madness that steals one of your one yep. attacks or mm -hmm. And so that's the only reason I'm not using the poison spiders. It's because he'll either do a board clear or he'll um, take one and use it against me. And so gotcha. I would rather, I'd rather just stall a little bit. Yeah. At least now he's got like some minor percentage of his bar of his um, resurrect like whiffing um, to pull the barns. So this is what hurts uh, is the Ragnaros like poison seeds any day now would be really nice. And, you uh, can deal that deal with that with double swipe. That's true. 
Um, that is true, and I still do have two moon fires and a living roots, so maybe I should. Um... It's actually pretty good to, to kind of clear some space in my hand anyways. What's frustrating is I still have half my deck to go through. Yeah. Uh, I mean, at this point, I may I may as well just use Wild Growth to draw. Uh, you know, I'm close enough to 10 mana that I don't really um, need it quite as much. But a Poison Seas would be really nice. And my my real complaint with this deck is that it can be... It's so draw-dependent. But then again, you know... Yeah. So we're really looking for the Aviana and then the Malagos, right? Yep. Yeah, I could do it if I had those two cards. So, um... And there's the Asar. So now we're on a clock. Yes, a big one. Uh, so, and this is why we run two Poison Seeds. <clears throat> Well, we um, do have the option for Wrath and Wild Growth to draw more. Yes, very true. Uh, which I'll probably do next turn. I mean, if I don't get what I'm looking for. Because right now, his Yasuraj is going to pull a Lich King, probably. Um, yeah. Or Obsidian Statue. Or a Barnes. <laughs> well, there's okay. Mally. There's Mally Ghost. Great. So... Let's... And really, I just have to not die. Like, if I can stay alive yeah. for one more turn. Um... There's Faceless. So we're going to... We're getting there. My So, but he's got, what, 10, 14, 18, 22... Yeah. So I, I'm 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 on a, a serious clock here. Um, granted, I could kill one of these, but I'm so close that really I, all I need is my uh, Aviana. Kit. Yeah. Thinking about it, we probably should have ran in the uh, Ironwood Golem to kill one before we killed the other one. Yes, uh, that is a good point. I misplayed there. No, that's fine. It's it's. I mean, this is a deck that's clearly. You're playing against a complicated deck, and you're playing a complicated deck, so... Right. So so here's what happens. If I draw into Aviana, I win. <laughs> if I draw yeah. into Spreading... If I draw into Spreading Plague, I might win. Um, or... Uh, and if not, then I probably lose. Well... There's the poison seeds, but we won't survive it, right? Ah, and there's the Aviana. Oh, and there's the Aviana. Three cards down. Too late. <laughs> so that's how much on the board? Uh, 12. 12. 12. And you can heal up to... None. None. 12. I could well, kill... Oh, yeah, you can't. That's right, you don't have the mana now. Well, I could kill two of these, right? Two, four, six, eight. But then you but have then... no direct damage left. Right. <laughs> so yeah yeah i think we just bottom right and move on to the next game yeah but we see how it works so that's yes that's really good when it happens it's beautiful i mean uh -huh. what aviana was in the bottom eight cards of the deck uh, you know that's that's tough that's a tough tough way to deal with it i've seen some people running twig of the world tree oh uh yeah. I haven't had any luck with it, but then again, maybe, you know, I need to give it more of a shot. Um, also, I've seen some people running um, some Innervate in there, because sometimes your hand gets a little bit clunky or you need a card earlier. And that's nice, too. Let me try this again. See if we can... Well, the uh, thing with Twig of the World Tree is what that can allow you to do is it allows you to put Malagos, take a swing, refresh your mana... And then have that mana to that way you don't have to rely on Aviana. Right, right. Hey guys, I 
think Vrasika fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, I, I haven't gotten the invite, and the um, the Skype is frozen up on my end, so I am uh, in listen only mode. So. What? Uh oh. All right, so our opening hand here is Spreading Plague, Ixlid, and Poison Seeds. And again, we're playing the exact same guy. The same guy. So This we, is we know what wild problems. <laughs> yeah. I ran into this even at like the rank 12. Well, the, the benefit is he didn't truly see what our deck is about. True. Uh, and there's a couple different versions. I, I've seen some people running. Uh, they're calling it like a fatigue druid, um, just because, or like a mill druid. Mm -hmm. um, that really, you just want to stall the game and maybe mill some of their cards, and you can make the game last forever. So uh, we drew our Malagos. That's a plus. And we had the poison seeds. Yeah. Yeah, I kept it. So for the Mulligan, I tossed everything except poison seeds. So in the event he gets a board full of nasty stuff. Um, I can use it. I'll probably, in this case, end up using Ooh. Branching Path for card draw. I, I like it. If we can get into Nourish or any other uh, ramp. Yeah, definitely. And I have mixed feelings. So this runs two um, Ultimate Infestations, and I have mixed feelings about it because may, I think maybe one is enough. But you want it. I mean, if I've got a... Um, really? He's got Barnes? On three. Uh, yeah. This guy. This guy. This <laughs> guy. This guy is what everybody hates this deck. Toph, I don't know who you are, but you're the reason people hate you. <laughs> <laughs> just, see, if he's got uh, two copies of... Um, Resurrect. Of Resurrect sitting in his hand. Oh, man. <laughs> now, you're, you're doing this to draw, right? Yeah. I am, yeah, I okay. am. So, I mean, I can't. Keep, it's it, there's like a catch twenty two because I don't want to keep Ragnaros alive. <laughs> there's one right? copy. Oh no, he did it. There's did the it. other copy. He did it. <laughs> Double Ragnaros uh, on this guy's four. A jerk. Uh, so, the good thing is we have poison seed. The bad thing <laughs> is we still die. <laughs> Because he has six. I mean, obviously we have to live in roots one of these. This is ridiculous. <laughs> I'd say this at least waters down his resurrect, but he used them both already. Yep. yep. So here he will play Eternal Servitude. Nope, he's just going to heal. Ah, yeah, double armor, I guess we have to, right? Gotta do it. And then hero power for one more. Yeah, I mean, gosh, I mean, I'm tempted to use the Living Roots to kill one of these things just so it dilutes his pool a little bit more. I don't know how good of an idea it is. Um, I mean, you got the swipe to go with Malagos if we can pull the combo off. but Yeah, uh, and I've got two copies of Moonfire also, so... True. I'm I, I would love some card draw at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so I don't know. Like I, I have a lot of fun with this deck, but at the same time, it's it's swingy. And he gets the statue. Of course, he gets the statue. Why wouldn't he get the statue? No, well, there's another branching path. But can you afford to use it for card draw? Maybe fifty fifty it. Card draw and armor. Into well, wild, wild growth. That's ramp. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, if he pulls a couple more, I can poison seeds even more. That's fine. I, I don't know. Would love an ultimate infestation uh, right about now. Yeah, we didn't see an ultimate infestation at all last game. No. Of course. Sure, why not? <laughs> You're the problem, Toph. 
you run the problem. <laughs> I don't mean big priest players. I mean you specifically. <laughs> <laughs> so this is. I mean, it's got a lot of stall, which yeah. I really like that. I'm not dead yet. <laughs> that's that's a I'm big not yet. Not dead yet. <laughs> <laughs> so. And you know the crazy thing is, like I know people who hit legend with this deck, but it's it, it's a know. fun deck, that's for sure. It's super fun, and see, that's uh, part of it for me is that, like, I mean, you can have some, you know, some kind of super tryhard deck that's just really aggressive, um, or you know, or you can have something that's more fun to play, and maybe I win less with it, but it's super fun. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's worth it. He's still got two eternal servitudes, so. Well, there's the coon. I think you have to mount fury in, don't you? Oh yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Like I just have to start armoring up. Um, if he gets another rag, when he gets another rag, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when he gets another rag, because he hasn't played a natural rag yet. Or his natural rag. Yeah. So there's a natural obsidian goal, obsidian statue. Yeah, I, I feel yeah. like that's that's okay with me. Yeah. It. I mean, at least I've got some stall, and I don't. I mean, you truly don't care about his health total we're back up to yeah. 13 i would love to get a nourish um or an ultimate infestation yeah would be really nice or even a wild growth something to draw me some cards but yeah i mean this deck works i feel like there's a lot of aggro on ladder right now especially pa i feel like a lot of my matches are against Paladin. And this deck yeah. feels good against it because there's a lot of armor, there's a lot of taunt. Um, I'm spreading sure plague feels really good. And, oh, yeah. And, I mean, depending on how much mana you've got, like, a Poison Seeds into Spreading Plague feels really awesome. Oh, yeah. You get generate a lot of Rage Quits. So... There's Aviana. Aviana. We just need more pieces, right? Yeah, I mean, my swipe would do nine, right? Yeah, nine, nine and five, uh, nine and six. But yeah, yeah. But yeah. So just keep armoring up. And wait and play the spreading plague. Just keep throwing, just, keep throwing taunts at him. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. <laughs> Again, no ultimate infestation yet. No nourish. So four of our thirteen <laughs> cards are draw. Excavated evil. Evil. <laughs> Two excavated evils? Because why wouldn't he have it? The deck runs too, I think. So well, we're at 16. He could. So. Yep. Oh, of course he has Double two excavated course he evil to clear our side of the board. But and that gives us more board clear. Oh, is that lethal? No, no, no. That's... All right, I'm not quite dead yet. Well, there's Nourish. Nourish and Excavated Evil? Yeah, except I can't use the Nourish because I need to not die. Right. Well, do that, then swipe. That would knock down one of our dudes, so. Oh, I should have swiped. Well... Now nah, swipe it first. Yeah. I mean, you can still swipe. But, I mean, it'll put us in the same position that we were yeah. in. So we'd have one. So if you swiped first and then played it, we would have one, one, five. Yeah. No, you you were right to play that first. So so either way, so that's that's fine. Just to not swipe yet. 
Shadow and Horror that's for the game. Oh. All right. <laughs> My thought. Well, well, you guys can watch me lose. I I should have swiped. <clears throat> My other line on that was nourish for card draw and possibly draw an excavated evil. Yeah. That I didn't might know. have worked. But I didn't even think but about that. Again, no, no guarantee. That, yeah, that, that I mean that's playing that's playing to your outs. So it's fun deck. I, I think I might try that one out because I really <laughs> yeah. I missed the Alviana Coon bandwagon and it seems like a good place to maybe have fun it's, with it. It's a lot of fun. It is. It's so. it is super fun. Alright. So. so uh any last thoughts before we wrap up for the night? Um, not a whole lot aside just from that. I, I have to thank Blizzard a little bit for um, showing the wild format a little bit of love this week or this month. Uh, it's nice because I, I will say from the, the community um, point of view, a lot of people feel like wild is, is like the redheaded stepchild, so to speak, of or uh, just like they forget about it. Oh, send it to Wild, you know. But but they don't think about it or don't look at it, don't or whatever. And so having like a whole month's worth of activities where we're getting um, you know a lot of love for Wild is really fun. And and some people are complaining maybe the tournament wasn't uh, the, like the Wild Open was. We only got one week's notice, which is pretty difficult for for people to um, get a good lineup and everything. But at the same time, I really appreciate it. I think it's. It's nice um, to uh, get some love. So, yeah, absolutely. So, get out there, guys. Play some wild. Uh, if you need ideas for decks, again, we'll have those posted in our show notes. With that, and make sure that you're tuning in to Into the Wild each week and uh, giving these guys a listen uh, for all things wild. Absolutely. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, that I we would love it. Yeah. So. And, right. Yeah. Thanks again for for having me on. I really appreciate it. No, we really said we were we were so uh, so excited you were able to do it. So we were really glad to have you. It was a lot of fun tonight. So all right, guys. If you have any questions or comments about the show, or if you have any questions about the deck that we played on tonight's show. Send us an email at HeroPowerPodcast at gmail.com. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button below on YouTube or give us a follow on Twitch to be alerted when we go live. And again, for more details about our uh, patron-only Discord or our quarterly patron tournaments, you can find that at patreon.com slash HeroPower. Until next week, good gaming. Bye, guys. Have fun.